And he turned to me and he said, Jordan, do you realize how valuable you are? And I was a bit confused and said, what do you mean? And he said, Jordan, I'm paying an overseas dev shop $30,000 every month just to keep my startup going. You're telling me you built the entire Revitize platform from marketing to back end to front end, internal dashboards, all by yourself? I smiled, and although I appreciated his compliment, I knew it wasn't me. It was the power of no code. Okay, so before I show you what to do and how to do it, let me give you a quick overview of why no code worked for me and why you should consider becoming a no coder and why it's a game changer for most tech businesses. First off, I wanna make this crystal clear. I am not a coder in any way. Prior to building my company, Revitize, I had zero engineering or coding experience, zero. I'm actually a bit of a meathead, a former college football player, maybe the opposite of what you'd expect a traditional dev background to be. In fact, I'm such an imposter to the dev world that I'm getting roasted pretty hard by coders I've never met. My wife and I had quite a few laughs reading through that comment section. But in any case, thanks to a new technology called No Code, I am a technical founder, a CTO of a promising startup that has been backed by the prestigious AngelPad Tech Accelerator. And that has allowed me and my business partner to build a nice lifestyle business. So let me explain how that all went down. I actually first discovered No Code before it was even called No Code back in 2013 while I was a sixth grade math teacher. I wasn't making a whole lot of money, and I had a newborn baby and a growing family to support, so I wanted to make some side cash. One day, while brainstorming what I could do to make some extra income, I saw something that caught my eye. An app called Flappy Bird had grossed over $65,000 every day for quite a while. Immediately, I thought, apps, that's what I'm going to do for my work from home side cash, apps. But there was one problem. I did not know the first thing about coding, and I didn't know the first thing about app design. So I started Googling, and I came across BuildBox, one of the first great no-code tools, by the way. After a few weeks, I had my first product on the App Store. I was astonished and ecstatic that I had just built a mobile game in a few weeks without knowing the first thing about coding or app design. I couldn't wait for my own 65K to start rolling in every day. Then... Reality hit. I ended up making about a dollar a day, sometimes less, sometimes more. I was pretty disappointed, but I learned a very important lesson. No code is amazing, but market research, marketing skills, go-to-market strategy, they all still matter a lot. So fast forward a little bit, and I was now working at a solar company as a regional sales manager. My boss, who was the CEO of our solar company, approached me with two serious problems for our business. One, we were losing deals to other companies who just had better and more online reviews on Google than us. Two, most of the deals we were getting were from referrals, and we wanted more of them. It was then that I realized something. Lack of reviews can break a business, and abundance of referrals can make a business. So my boss, Richard, he'd heard that I had dabbled in apps before. He had this idea for the software that would streamline both reviews and referrals all in one place. He asked me if I could build it. I had just recently stumbled upon Bubble.io, which helps you build web apps without code, but I wasn't too sure if it could really do what we needed. So I decided to give it a shot. As I dove in, I was absolutely astounded at what I could accomplish without having to write a single line of code. In literally two months of work, I had a working MVP, or a minimum viable product, up and running, and we called it Revitize.com. As the perfectionist developer who was constantly fixing and tweaking things, I was actually pretty terrified to launch it to customers. But my boss, now business partner, Richard, he wasn't going to wait any longer. So he gave our accountant a phone call and said, hey, I have a software that'll help you with reviews and referrals. Without even seeing our software, our accountant said, yep, I'm in. And he paid us nearly $1,000 that day for a year contract. He's still a client to this day. A quick side note on that. 
and we'll get more into this later, but I realize this first sale is a testament to the fact that you need to solve problems with your software, not just have cool features. Our accountant knew that we could solve his business's problems. He did not care at all whether we were built on no code by some dude faking it, or if we had a team of engineers with a master's degree in computer science. That first customer was all the validation we needed. We knew we were solving a real problem, even though we honestly haven't had a pretty crappy initial product. We knew that with no code, we could iterate quickly on customer feedback and build something special. Again, we'll dive deeper into this later, but constant communication with customers is critical to your success, so you can iterate your product based on their feedback. Well, to keep a long story short, we were off to the races. Within one year of selling and iterating a bunch on our product, we had amassed a customer base that was roughly paying us $25,000 per month in recurring revenue. And let me tell you, in software, especially B2B software, the margins are very good to you. So throughout that year, emails like this were a regular occurrence. I'd constantly get clients saying, man, I wish I could hire you as my developer. I have no idea how you crank these things out so fast. So after that year, we decided we wanted to take the business to the next level. So we decided to check out the various startup accelerator programs. We applied to a bunch of them and we were accepted by AngelPad. And at the time it was based in New York City. They gave us $120,000 in exchange for 5% of our company. Within two weeks, we had our bags packed and we were staying in an Airbnb near Manhattan. It was a wonderful experience. We were able to meet some amazing people and make some great friendships along the way. And we were tutored by two of the smartest startup gurus I've ever met, Tomas Corte and Karin Majeskas. I should probably mention, initially, once we arrived, I was terrified that my status as CTO that doesn't know how to code would be a huge turnoff to the folks at AngelPad. It actually wasn't. In fact, they commented about how impressed they were by this growth hack I had found. And the reaction from the other founders in my cohort was similar. One day, we were sitting in a WeWork office building uh, with another founder of a company that's kind of similar to Revitize. And he turned to me and he said, Jordan, do you realize how valuable you are? And I was a bit confused and said, what do you mean? And he said, Jordan, I'm paying an overseas dev shop $30,000 every month just to keep my startup going. You're telling me you built the entire Revitize platform from marketing to back end to front end, internal dashboards, all by yourself? <laughs> I smiled and although I appreciated his compliment, I knew it wasn't me. It was the power of no code. Anyways, AngelPad really helped us refine our idea and think through many of our business assumptions. They also helped us craft a winning pitch deck, showed us how to pitch venture capitalists and groomed our business for success. After pitching several venture capital firms, including Sequoia, Pear VC, Homebrew, Tuesday VC, Shasta, and more, we ultimately decided against raising a ton of money. And I'll go more in depth into the pros and cons of raising money in upcoming videos. But suffice it for now to say, we ended up deciding we were pleased with being our own bosses and having a great lifestyle business. As time went on, we continued to sell, refine our approach, learn from our mistakes, and tweak our business model. Then, suddenly in early 2021, a couple months after I got acute COVID, I actually got pretty sick again. I had several ER trips and hospital stays with pretty intense symptoms. At the time, the doctors had no clue what was wrong with me, and now we know it was post-COVID long haulers syndrome. To make a long story short, I was down for the count. For several months, I had to hire someone to replace me. But as I started improving, I knew that I had had tons of people approaching me, asking me how they could build their own tech idea. So I did a bit of freelance and consulted people on how to build scalable no-code apps themselves. One approached me and said, hey, Jordan, can you help me build a learning management system for my football team? Another called me and said, hey, Jordan, can you build me a software that will streamline my company's home building process? A relative came to me and said, hey, Jordan, I'm doing this new business and using like 10 different softwares. Can you help me consolidate all that data into one spot? So it was then that I realized how helpful software is to so many different niches and how much faster and cheaper it is to build with no code. Truly, I thought, 
Whether you're an entrepreneur or a freelancer, knowing no code gives you superpowers. After spending so much time and energy teaching my friends and loving every minute of it, I realized that I wanted to go active as an educator and passive with Revitize. I've had such tremendous success with no code in both the startup and the freelance world that I couldn't pass up the opportunity to teach others, not only how to build stuff, but also the business skills necessary to succeed. And thus, no code advantage was born. So why choose me for your no code learning journey? Well, there are a couple reasons. First off, I don't want you to just know how to clone Airbnb or rework a crappy template. I want you to understand how to model and improve upon and scale something that actually competes with the Airbnbs of the world. As Albert Einstein once said, any fool can know. The point is to understand. In the No Code Advantage Academy, we take you through chronologically and step by step everything you need to understand. Second, there are many, many ways to skin a cat, so to speak, and some ways are better than others. In the beginning of my no-code journey, I endured countless hours banging my head against the wall, wondering why my app doesn't behave the way I want it to, or why doesn't it perform quite as nice as I'd like it to, or why does my design suck so bad, or why my first apps weren't selling very well. In short, I don't want you to have to endure that yourself. So I've taken all these lessons I've learned and packaged these skills into one concise learning academy from market research to building your app the right way to good design principles without being a designer to business and marketing skills without needing to go get an MBA. I've tried my very best to remove all the fluff so you can get from idea to tech business as fast as possible, all without having to learn code. I owe my career to no code and I want to see the same thing happen to you. Now, I want to make this very clear. This is not a get rich quick scheme and it does require a ton of diligence and a lot of work. But if you apply the things I teach, I know you can find success. So although I'm biased and this is cliche, I think it goes without being said. No code is the future and the future is now.